divorce court today. Rehab may not be the best place to find a mate, but Ronald and Crystal believe they can beat the odds. Can they handle children, family anger, and exes? Ronald Bay and Crystal White have brought their dispute for Judge Lynn Toller to resolve. Testimony and divorce court before your vows starts now. Mr. Bay and Ms. White, you're here because you're thinking about getting married, but you have some reservations and concerns. You wanted to see what I thought about your union. I'm going to tell you exactly what I see, how I feel. Uh, I've got your marriage license. If I don't think it's a good idea, I'll rip it up. If I do think it's a good idea, I'll smile real nice and hand it back. But you took a compatibility test. I looked at it. Some interesting things in there. I'm going to discuss those momentarily. But, Mr. Bay, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell me how this relationship got started and why you're concerned that it might not end well in marriage? Well, it got started uh, down in Florida. Mm -hmm. um, I left my home state of Virginia, went down there for rehab purposes. Uh huh. And 60 days after I was down there, met Crystal. Was she in rehab, too? Yes. Usually not a good start, I'm going to say. And you can rehab, rehab, both got the same issue, but go ahead. And everybody told us mm -hmm. it ain't a good idea. Right. We had a us-against-the-world mentality. We fought through, and we was going to prove everybody wrong. Okay. Um, early on, she got pregnant. How early? The first time we had sex. <laughs> Is that true, Mrs. White? Yeah. It was his fault, but yeah. What do you mean no, it was, was his fault? fault. <laughs> you were there. <laughs> Why no birth no, control? You are already both fighting two two ugly demons. Can well, I answer that question? You please. I bought birth control every time me and Crystal got together. The very first time, it was literally about two feet away. And And nobody reached over? I tried. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> I tried. Yeah. She stopped me. Oh that why would you do that? Well, Okay, it was kind of the moment situation, and listen, it was sex too is late always in the moment. Do you know what I mean? It's, 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 that, that's what they, we all know about that. That's right. why you have it in arm's reach. He right. was reaching. You should. Hey. He didn't reach that hard, though. He didn't reach that hard. Oh, <laughs> come on, you two. But anyway, so she got pregnant the first time you had sex. Then what happened? <clears throat> we decided at that point because of her situation, and let me just give you this little backdrop. At that particular point, I still was a legally married man, and she was a still legally married woman. Oh, okay. We were new in rehab, and my suggestion at the time was because of the timing, because of our situations, it just wasn't a good time. And um, that caused a rift between us because we both agreed that it wasn't the best timing, mm. and... 12 weeks later, she decided... He kicked me out. She decided that she wanted to go in a different direction. Did you kick her out, or did she just decide to leave? Which I, one I'm going to tell you verbatim, based on what I told her. I did not come down here to Florida to get involved, to leave one family, to kind of get involved with another family. It's not the right time. And if there's a child on this earth, I will always financially support the child. I've got two previous children. I don't have a problem financially supporting them, but I'm not ready for this ready-made family thing right now. So, so you told her to hit the bricks? Well, because she, both of us weren't from Florida, I told her the best idea, if you're going to, you know, proceed forward, then to be, at least be with your family. I will give you the financial support. For the baby, but... Right. So you need to kind of go back to Ohio, where you're from. Ms. White, what is your version of that event? I take it it's not the same. No, he's, he's speaking very, you know, logically right now. Mm -hmm. But when we were in the situation, it was, I'm not ready, this is not the right thing. And which, I mean, we, we kind of went back and forth. But at the end of the day, it was what it was. And that Saturday, it was, I want to work it out. But then again, I don't. Then Sunday, he bought me a dog. And Monday, he told me he'll buy me a bus ticket to get out. And then Tuesday, I left. You bought her a dog? Bought yeah. me a dog. Did you I, buy her a bus ticket? Because I felt that she was <laughs> understanding my position, understanding that both of us agreed that this was not the course we was going to take. And for you to change courses, that don't obligate me to change courses. Okay. I want to stay on the course that we set out. No, okay. So if that's your I decision, got you. You know, I got you. Let me ask you this. It sounds like it was one hot, sticky mess. Yes. <laughs> How did you guys end up getting back together and even considering getting married? I was about 30 minutes from Miami, and I worked with some guys in the barbershop, and now that she wasn't there, um, I kind of started hanging out with them, and I kind of got a little off the chain a little bit. You know? Got off chain? Got off the chain. Yeah. 
And yeah. by her continuously kind of, you know, reaching out, saying, hey, are you all right? You know, and I, I wanted her to reach out. I reached out a little bit. And it basically got to a point where after about two or three months of being off the chain, I kind of realized, hey, you know what? It is what it is. You know, the child is going to be here. I need to man up and do the right thing. She had opened up the, the invitation for me to come to Ohio. Mm -hmm. So we decided three months before my daughter was born that I was going to come on out to Ohio. I'm going out there to be her. You tell me what you think your current problems are now that you're back together. What are your concerns? My main concerns are his, his temper and attitude and the fact that I never get... Temper and attitude? Yes. It doesn't matter the situation. It's, it's always the end of the world situation. It's, it's always the end of the world. It's never just a, It's never a pop gun it's, problem. It's, it's always an atomic it's, bomb It's always problem. the end of the world. It's always it's going to be the end of the world. Any situation, it's How not often be. does he get angry during the course of any given week? Just kind of like a ballpark it. It's more about any given day. <laughs> now, now, Mr. Bay, she's calling you a hothead. And I, and I want you to... <sighs> Could that, in fact, be the case? When I first came to Ohio, it wasn't like that. We had a great time. But things happened. A lot of things have happened. A lot of arguments, a lot of name calling, a lot of disrespect, a lot of trust issues gets... I'm at that point now. Okay. Well, yeah, every day I'm just an old mad man right now. I'm gonna drill down now mm -hmm. into what all <laughs> those issues were that drove you off the edge. Next, did texting an ex-boyfriend start an argument while shopping for a promise ring? Are you considering marriage but aren't sure that your intended is really right for you? Call toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Become a fan at facebook.com slash divorcecourt. Divorce Court, real relationships, raw emotion. Testimony continues now. Mr. Bay, I understand that one of the issues you say that has driven you to such anger is the lack of trust. You don't trust her and you have reasons not to trust her. Tell me about the promise ring. She had been asking me about a promise ring for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I had always told her that I'm not going to give you a promise ring until I'm ready to make the promise. Right. You know, we, we got a lot going on right now. I'm trying I to be a good dude. engagement ring, not a promise ring. So after about uh, a year or so, I guess, it was her birthday. And I said, you know what? This is what I'm going to do for her birthday. I'm going to get her the promise ring. Okay. We leaving, going to the mall to get the promise ring. So I'm driving the car. She has my phone. And she's over there doing what I think she normally does, which is Candy Crush and all the other stuff that I ain't mm -hmm. into. I get to the mall, go in the mall, buy the ring, put the ring on her finger, make the promise. Did you get the ring? Yes. Oh, right there. There you right. go. All right. <laughs> the next morning, I wake up, playing around with my phone, not realizing that her Facebook was logged into my phone. So when the Facebook came up, I noticed a message that she was having with the guy. And this is just paraphrasing, but the guy said something like, hey, you know I still love you, you know I still care about you. And her response was, hey, I'm with my dude right now, hit me on my other phone. I look at the date first, and the date is November 21st. That's her birthday. I'm like, well, this was yesterday. Then I look at the time. The time was literally 15 minutes before I put the ring on her finger. Something that you had asked me for a year you're telling another guy, hit you on your other phone because I'm with my dude, knowing we get ready to walk in the mall and I'm ready to put a ring on your finger. Miss mm. White, did you do that? <laughs> when I had saw on my, because my phone, I couldn't go to, through Facebook. So I would use his phone. For, if I was doing anything wrong, I wouldn't even have given him, be able to give access to my Facebook page. But I was, when I was going on there, I had seen that someone had messaged me and I didn't know who it was. So then when, when I said, who is this? Because all, all I saw was, what's up? And I said, well, what's up? Who is this? And he said, you know, this is, yeah. And then he just started the conversation of, you know, I'm still in love with you. I still want to be with you. And actually, before I, I said I was with my dude, I said, um, not even going to have that conversation. Because to me, it was pointless. So, I mean, I got to, it was kind of just a question of how you've been, because I hadn't seen him in a few years. And then it was, you know, it was just back and forth like that. And I had told him, actually, because my phone was dying and we were, do we were running around. And I said, just text me later. You know, if a guy comes at you with, I'm still in love with you, you with a dude, and he put a ring on your finger, not happen, got my man, have a happy life. But it was never That's it. Happen. 
when you continue to communicate with someone who you know has feelings for you, right. any communication whatsoever is encouragement, and, and you don't want to do that. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Okay. Now, you tell me what your main issue is with him. You say that he never gives you the benefit of the doubt. What do you mean by that? The benefit of the doubt, okay. It was late at night, maybe 2, 3 in the morning, and I had cleaned out a pantry, and I always keep my cigarettes in the pantry. Well, at this, I could not remember what I did with them. So instead of waking everybody up in the house, because our daughter's asleep, I decided just to go out, run out to the store, and grab a pack of cigarettes. Well, it, it turned into a whole big thing, because I didn't wake him up, which I did try to wake him up, and I left a note on the door saying, run to the store to get six. Mm -hmm. And I still got. Did you get mad because she just ran out of the house and didn't tell you where she was going? I got furious. Why? Okay, you say you tried to wake me up, but I didn't wake up. Then you tell me, well, I didn't want to turn the light on because I didn't want to wake you up. If you're trying to wake me up and I'm not waking up, you <laughs> turn, turn the light on. Try to put a cigarette. <laughs> in addition, in addition to this, in addition to this, this ain't all. In addition to this. We have one car that we share. I drive the car the majority of the time. All the she, time. She, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm the only one working, so I drive the car back and forth to work. She drives the car three or four times, maybe month. a month, mm -hmm. right? I know when she drives the car because she has the seat up so close that I can't even get in the car because uh -huh. it's so tight. Well, we're short. Sure. There's nothing we can do. Right, right. There's nothing we can do. Yeah. But with this time, this, the next morning when I came out the house, the seat was back, <laughs> but the back part was up. That's what made me notice that she must have went somewhere last night because this ain't normal. So I'm saying... Why didn't you just leave the seat where you normally leave the seat? If you didn't do nothing wrong, why try to move the seat back? For the first time that we've ever, you've ever done that. I'm hearing about the concerns. I understand the nature of the conflict. Now I want to get an opportunity to find out why you think this might work and why you do love one another. When divorce court before your vows continues, what happens when stress boils over into anger? Ronald and Crystal met in rehab. Do you think that's a good start for a stable relationship? Call 1-800-282-1991 to vote now and see if America agrees with your opinion. You'll also receive some valuable offers. Call now. If you would like your case heard on Divorce Court, call us toll free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. And join the conversation on Twitter at Divorce Court. Divorce Court Before Your Vows continues. I want to talk to you about the compatibility test, which caused me some concern. Okay. All righty. I asked you what you wanted from your husband. Mm -hmm. You said more understanding. Stop mm -hmm. being so angry over anything and the smallest thing, patience. Usually yes. when, when I ask what do you want from your husband or wife, they say love, honor, they say... You're, this is a cry for help. You're saying that he's angry? Yes. That he picks on you? Yes. He's impatient? Yes. Pops off quickly? Yes. And you're thinking about marrying that? Yes. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. That's what causes me concern. Do you know what she's talking about when she says you get angry quickly? Yes, and here's one of the reasons why. I work seven days a week. I work second shift. I get off at 12 o'clock at night. I come home, we sit up for an hour or two to have a little together time. We go to bed around two. I try to, to my best ability, allow her to sleep from the time she gets into bed until the time she naturally wakes up, which is sometimes eight or nine o'clock. She most of the time gets a good six, seven straight hours. Me, after working, I will get up at two or three, give my daughter a bottle, lay back down, get up at five or six, give my daughter a bottle, get up at seven or eight and be up with my daughter. I'm tired, I'm beat down. I work in a heat treating facility where the heat is actually 100 to 110. Mm. Then I come home and you're sleeping, which I don't mind that. I am, I can operate off of three hours of sleep, which is what I've done the whole time my daughter been born, I've been running off three hours of sleep. And that's broken sleep, not a straight through broken sleep. So when I get up and I'm going to work and you, I'm there. Ms. White? Yes. It, that, but that is not every day. And see, I, I, I saw that, that it was for the three and four hours of sleep. That is not enough. So I started doing the, the middle of the night, the one o'clock and the two o'clock things. I would actually stay up. And for five weeks, he actually switched because he got a promotion and he actually had to switch. 
to first shift to where I Do was 24 hours Do you understand his stress, though? Do you acknowledge his level of stress and that that could, in fact, entice someone to be angry? I think he creates it and wants that stress. Why do you think he creates his because own he stress? Will make a, he, will, he will be unhappy in any situation. You can do everything in the world. I mean, it could be, it could be if I go to get up, leave him sleep, and take care of Nuka Arba, you know, without his help. Then it becomes an issue of you're not saying, you know, like, like I'm saying to him, like, he can't do it. And then he gets upset with me if I don't make him do it. Okay. Okay, I've got you on there. We're, we're, we're going to talk about that and get to the bottom of it. Judge Lynn Dollar's ruling next. Divorce Court. Judge Lynn Dollar's ruling right now. Mr. Bay, you're coming across here as a very stressed individual and a reasonable individual. But what I want to say is, I don't think this is the way you conduct business at home. And I'll tell you why. When you two filled out this compatibility test, you had one section that both of you were in straight alignment, complete agreement, that you were an angry, aggressive, and moody. You said it about yourself, and she said it about you. Do you sign on to the fact that you are, in fact, an angry and aggressive individual? I have allowed myself in this relationship to get me that way, yes. Do, 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 do. No, 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 no. You are responsible for how you feel. You can decide to be angry. You can decide not to be. And my question to you is, do you respond to your stressors with anger and aggression? I honestly don't have a light switch to say, be angry, don't be angry. If something makes me angry, it makes me angry. How I respond and how I display it is another thing. That is a weak area of mine. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a weak area of mine. Okay, here's a quick example of what, what really takes me over the top, okay? <clears throat> One day, a week or two ago, I was on the way to work. She packs my lunch for me, right? She knows at work, our break room, you kind of got to put a plate in there for me to warm up anything. Put it in the aluminum foil, don't help me when I get to work. From time to time, she kind of forgets the plate, okay? I text her and said, you keep forgetting the plate. Not thanks for the lunch, but you forgot the plate. <laughs> if, if you just say, hey, baby, I'm sorry, I forgot the plate. Sometimes that's all the man need. I don't need no, this, you explain your way out of it. You rationalize it, you justify it, you minimize it. You do everything you can do to make me Except look. rectify it. it. And sometimes just acknowledging it. Yeah. I'm a man, I, well, I won't die if I don't get a plate, but you did forget it. That's the truth. You forgot it. But and, and are you hot no. about it when you're texting that no. you forgot the plate? Are you hot about it? Because to me, if, if my husband said he forgot the plate, I wouldn't text you forgot the plate. When I got home and said, hey, babe, tomorrow don't forget the plate because you forgot every day. You texted her right then because you were hot right then. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, 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 and the reason why a lot of texts go through is because we cannot communicate. Yeah. Because if I bring it to her... But that's nothing to be angry about. He's gonna you see what stuff. I'm saying? And being anger, anger is a decision. Yeah. Oh, it is. Right, but I'll, don't I'll, deny your anger when you are because you cannot address a problem you don't acknowledge that you have. You were angry when you wrote the text. You didn't have the plate, you couldn't eat, and you were mad. I like you people. I'm worried about you people. I'm worried about your decision-making ability. I mean, having two kids, you're in a stressful situation. You've got to make rational decisions. You've got to lead your mm -hmm. life and that, not let your life lead you. So I'm concerned about that. You don't like to be wrong, and you dance, and you're angry. And I think you're a good man. I think you take care of your family. But I don't think you understand how disconcerting your anger and your aggression can be. You love your daughter. But if you create chaos in her, your household, you create chaos in her head. And she's got to work hard to get it out. Don't tag her with that. You know what I mean? I'm just asking you not to tag her. I'm not going to tear this up because I'm not going to leave you with that image. I would like you to get anger management. I really would. I'd like you to get anger management, not just for her, but for your kids, too. Because the anger that you throw at her slides right off onto your kids. You don't think it does, but it does. So work harder. Quit getting pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> and then maybe. Well, this is the last one. Okay. Then maybe. So I'm going to adjourn this matter. Good luck to both of you. Thank you. Crystal and Ronald respect the judge's orders.
Post a comment or submit your case at divorcecourt.com or call toll free 1-877-311-2222. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Divorce Court.